Hello everyone and welcome to another I Pick My Butt video. We're playing more Rebel Link today and we're going to be doing a Southern Desert with the Tank Commander on Brutal. And just to show you we can, we're going to be playing with no advisors so when the time comes for you playing it, it'll only be that much easier. So this really wasn't that difficult and if you use this tactic here, you can kind of modify it however you want to try to get more points or less and keep your reputation. But Zulu Factor, that's where I like to start district representatives and then we'll go down and do the one down on the bottom left there that's effective procurement it's going to kind of keep the cost of the initiatives down and from here we're just going to kind of pace this one out and watch our money highways and urban that's where it is so we'll go back on the civilian tab do the infrastructure and we're going to do highways typically how i like to start out beginning my games now it really helps with the movement of the troops get some speedy across the board and it really is a big improvement when you are trying to get those insurgents all the way in the other side of the map. So like I was saying, we're really going to kind of watch our money, spend it kind of slowly, but we will have to go back in a second and open up some more tiers. If you haven't found out already, there's some initiatives you can't buy without purchasing our one. So outreach office, look at that. It opens up a whole bunch of them there and that's kind of a good start. But we're also going to go in and do international assistance. When this pops up for the notification, we'll be selecting the right one, which is funding only, which pretty much means free money. And we'll get over here to services discussions. I usually like to have all three of those done. We'll start off with water supplies because we are kind of watching our money over here. I can kind of use the $30 mark as kind of the reference of when I should spend and when I shouldn't spend. So we'll just kind of watch the money for a little bit here, wait for that inflation to go back down. And when the time comes, We'll go in and we'll spend the money on anti-corruption. I really can't think of any brutal board that I've played so far that I didn't have to invest in anti-corruption, or at least invest in a lot of it. It really is a key item, and if you're playing brutal, it's definitely necessary. So we'll also do main roads to kind of help with movement through the place. And then universal justice, I don't think I ever see that one go up, but that's extra support right there, and it is really helpful too. Another one I always like to do. Now these are all things I tend to do before the insurgents pop out, kind of set on my ways on them, but I do make some changes here and there. But we will go back into civilian, into services discussions, and we're gonna do that school regeneration, we're gonna do medical supplies. I really wanna get that PNR. I'm always checking to see how much it'll pop that support down the bottom. But if you can, always spend the money before you use it on a couple other initiatives, just to see if you can get us to jump a little more. It does say that it significantly increases future and existing initiatives but you will see here this is for the whole international assistance the ngo we're going to do funding only it doesn't get out of control the full access it's just way too insane especially on brutal it causes high inflation high corruption and you pretty much lose the game pretty fast that's just my experience on it even the limited one is still a little bit wacky so i just take the money on it and spend the money where i want to so we're going to try to find this rebel base here somewhere either in that area where the insurgents just popped up or touching but you see a second one just showed up there so it's going to be somewhere to the left of this or right there so we really need to find this rebel base to crush it otherwise they're going to start taking over the area now i wasn't a fan of the tank commander at first but once i saw how these tanks can really crush people I really started liking it and it's just a matter of kind of using them, pushing them around and keep those insurgents from controlling those areas too long. We will get a second coalition to go here to try to pop it in the area above and see if there is a rebel base right there. And I am always one to select arrest them. I don't know why, it just makes me feel like a good person, but that's one I always choose on it. We will go back in here and we want to get the other down on the bottom left there, advanced driving classes. That's going to reduce some of the damage that that tank is doing. And let's see once this coalition troop here gets it there it is the rebel base i can't say how huge it is to really crush these bases if you don't get them right away they're going to start terrorizing and they're not going to stop pumping out the insurgents they're just going to overwalk you and this goes for any governor any board any level get rid of those rebel bases find them fast and we're also trying to keep insurgents away from the main cities definitely move them to those areas if you have to because that's really gonna be a lot of reputation points if they start taking those over but really this is not looking too bad right now it's feeling kind of smooth and gentle but we'll spend some money on some interpreter and guide just to get some extra support levels and we'll do the second pnr strategic communications that's really going to help things boost and we should start stabilizing some of the areas just like that right there so Reputation, we need it to win, and if you don't stabilize at least one beginning, it's going to start plummeting on us. So you see, we're just kind of moving these guys around, and this really is how I played the game all the way through. There's not a lot more to it. 
It's just moving these guys around, crushing the areas they're in, and those tanks really help out hugely. And corruption is still pretty low, which is a good thing right now. But you can see they got a good group of areas down there on the bottom left. That's going to give them a pretty good bonus. So we'll get another coalition troop going on here just to kind of wipe some of these things out and try to minimize it. And I think we'll slap that troop right on that main city there just to keep them from taking that over. That would be very bad. We're stabilizing some more. They are getting that bonus going over there on the left, but we'll move some troops around and try to kind of minimize that, kind of crush it a little bit. I do like to use these guys as a support. You see the lines there. That's going to be a huge help in defeating them also. And let's get some garrisons going. I'm a fan of garrisons. There was a time I stopped using them. Don't know why, but they're also going to help kind of feed those troops and kind of help crush things also. And you can see down in the middle there, yes, they are making a little bit of a push. They're trying to take over some of those cities. We'll have that national one done soon, and we'll kind of keep that over there for a second. But we're starting to crush the bottom left there. We got that one going into place here. So really, we're working it, and it looks like there is another rebel base that's going to be around. You can usually tell by the giant insurgent kind of diamonds that you see there. That's usually an indication that they've got some pretty strong troops happening. We'll move that national one back and over. And we'll get some more of those guys kind of cranking out too. Just to have them because eventually you do want all the nationals and then diminish the coalition ones. It looks like Rantha actually allow them to go away. We will get one back eventually after the war or so. I really never pay attention how long it takes. I just kind of say, hey, when they get here, they get here. So 86 reputation really isn't that bad at all. I think it did get somewhere down to about 30 or so in this, which I'm okay with that. I'm just trying to show you guys how to beat this. You kind of kind of wiggle it here and there, send some coalitions home. But it really wasn't too bad. And like I said, this does not feel like a threatening game at all. It feels like we've got them pretty well under control. When using the tank commander, I really don't worry about the mountain areas too much unless I have enough troops just to kind of say, hey, let's finally crush them. Counter-Strike, we did that there. Foreign Affairs, that's a nice thing to do to kind of prevent those things from popping up. Or even if they do pop up, choosing the middle selection out. So they keep on trying for that main area right below the headquarters there. If we wanted to, we could go to the government tab, spend the money on local police recruitment. Being close to the headquarters, it would probably roll out fast. But I'm not too worried. We're going to spend the money on the national transportation one there, whatever it's called. That is going to help out for combat bonuses, and it is really a significant thing to do. But you can see down here, it looks like we're going to kind of crush them over in this corner. We do have that one area that's grayed out, which could make it difficult. They might run right through it, if anything, but we'll try to push them out of the way. We'll get another national army going, anti-corruption, but you still saw corruption was pretty darn low, so it wasn't too bad at all. So you can see we're 47% stability across the map. We're 79 reputation. We pretty much have this in the bag, but we'll just come up here and do the foreign affairs one, I think it is, foreign relations office. And that's going to be the one where you see, do you want to counter strike that middle selection? That's going to be what that initiative does for us. It does take time to build up the percentage of how likely it'll work. But once you start seeing those things pop up, spend the money on it, it'll definitely be worth it. So it does look like we finally crushed that down in the corner, bottom left there. That's awesome. We can start moving those guys around. And look at that. There's a freebie right up there. Rebel base up top. That's the game saying, here you go. Let's just get rid of it. New Air Force, that's a huge one I like to do that really seems to help out. Always try to save on about $14 if you could do that. And we could have just done the peace treaty right there. I think it would have said like 8% that they'll refuse. And honestly, with how much reputation we have, the amount of surgeons on the map, we probably could have beaten that game within about two minutes after that. But honestly, you know, 10 minutes into a game, I wanted to have some fun. So I just kept on playing and said, eh, I'll crush them on my own for a little bit longer there. But really, if you guys do this, it's not too difficult at all. This is not a hard board. The tank commander makes it very easy. Just try to push the guys towards the mountains. Focus on those rebel bases, and you'll be fine. So hopefully this video was helpful for you guys. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you haven't already, hit the thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. And remember, I pick my butt.
Yeah. Uh -huh. 